3,500 liters every second. That's the average volume of wastewater being treated right now at the Henrik Star Wastewater Treatment Plant. To serve Stockholm's rapidly growing population and meet increasingly stringent environmental demands, the city's wastewater treatment needs to be upgraded. So we're working to make an extremely good treatment plant even better, to be the world's most modern. The principle of wastewater treatment is to remove solid waste, then in steps using chemistry, biology and physics to remove smaller particles until the water is as clean and as free from contaminants as possible. The first stage is basic mechanical treatment. This is done using movable screens and sand traps, removing debris that shouldn't be in the sewage system, for example earbuds, moist snuff, wet wipes and cotton. Even heavier particles, such as sand and gravel, are removed here. After that comes primary sedimentation. Clarifying agents are added, binding phosphorus to sludge, among other actions. Lumps form and sink to the bottom and are pumped away. The next stage is biological cleansing. In large basins, microorganisms break down nitrogen-based elements, such as ammonium and nitrates, in several steps turning them into nitrogen gas, as well as binding the remaining phosphorus to the biological sludge. By removing phosphorus and nitrogen, we can reduce eutrophication in the Baltic Sea. The biological sludge must then be separated from the cleaned water. This happens in large secondary sedimentation basins, where the sludge sinks to the bottom and clean water can run off at the surface. But this method is no longer adequate, as the sludge is organic and sometimes doesn't sink as it should. So we're upgrading to a new, more effective method, membrane technology. This consists of modules with membrane threads that allow water through, but not the sludge. The membrane models are mounted in cassettes that are submerged into the rebuilt secondary sedimentation basins. The membrane's pores are about a thousand times smaller than human hair, so small that particles such as microplastics and bacteria can't pass through. To stop a layer of sludge from accumulating on the membrane surface, air is blown through the membranes from the bottom of the cassettes causing the membrane threads to vibrate, shaking off loose particles that might have adhered. The membranes are also cleaned regularly by reversing the flow of water and adding some cleansing chemicals. Upgrading to membrane technology will help us to clean more than twice the volume of water using the same surfaces as before. After the water has passed through the membranes, our high effluent quality demands are met and it can be discharged into Salt Churn Bay. But before that, the heat in the treated wastewater is recovered. At the Hammerby power plant, this energy becomes district heating energy, warming Stockholm's homes. What about all the rubbish and sludge? The rubbish collected in the mechanical treatment is washed, dewatered to remove moisture, and transported to energy recovery. The sludge that forms in the remaining cleansing stages has high energy content so it's pumped into our digesters, where organic material is broken down to produce the biogas that powers Stockholm's fleet of buses, among other applications. What's left makes excellent fertilizer for agriculture. Rebuilding Henrik Stahl's treatment plant is being done in stages, since the plant must simultaneously work at full capacity. Work will be complete in 2029. The water then returning to nature will be even cleaner than now and contain less nitrogen, phosphorus, microplastics and other harmful elements. A victory for the environment, quite simply. <laughs>